Everyone and welcome to another Patreon exclusive episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. On this episode, we are going to be talking top five seventies horror films. And as always, I am one third of the hosting team this evening, Mister Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. There, wow. <laughs> and with me, as always. Is Heather Powell coming to you today from plain old Waterdown, Ontario, Canada? But we have one of the coolest motherfuckers with us tonight. Fuck yeah. We um, do. He, I had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman about two years ago now, and we do a little podcast called It's Not Horror, Okay? And he is honestly one of the funniest people I've ever met. He <laughs> makes me laugh every single episode that we do. It's Not Horror. He's beyond creative. Um, he has a show called Android Vision. and it is really well put together and really well done. And he puts a lot of love and passion into it. It's very high quality, has the finest women who just try to keep up with his hotness on the show. <laughs> um, he's part of one half of the hosting team that is Cemetery Gates podcast with Sandra Kane, who we've had on the show before. Uh, he is Android Virus. Android, thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. This is awesome. I'm, I'm, this is weird, but cool. <laughs> it's always weird because I give these really long intros to make people feel self-conscious about how awesome mm-hmm. they are. So I hope mm-hmm. I did that for you. That was my goal. I got chills. I don't know if you can. See <laughs> <laughs> so we're just fresh off of doing a recording for It's Not Horror. And to give you an idea of the kind of sense of humor that this gentleman has, um, we were talking about Halloween kills and he made a joke about everyone <laughs> killing the guy that looks like Humpty Dumpty. And- <laughs> I have been laughing about that for three days still. Really? <laughs> wow. I it was so funny <laughs> and just perfect timing. Android has these little <laughs> timing perfectly. Um, now we'll get into your podcasting, I guess, you know, how you got into that. But first questions first, how did you get into horror? Um, horror, how did I get into it? I, I would say, and this is this is weird because I'm probably gonna go a lot deeper than than most because uh it's pretty much ingrained to me, I would say. Uh just my dad i would say the the quick answer um he would take me to movies as a little kid and i got i I, honestly the and i'm gonna tell you this will completely describe my personality so the first four movies i ever remember seeing in the movie theaters as a child was greece um conan the barbarian nice uh the road warrior and creep and and (laughs) creep show oh fuck yeah (laughs) yeah creep show (laughs) um but and 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 that was cool i mean i always remember being a little kid like growing up in a catholic household uh, like a hispanic catholic household like movies were taboo right like about satan especially about satan like you know you got the the exorcists the omens and you know but you know catholics being catholics you kind of want to cross that line and anyways i grew up with those movies in the house and, and those really didn't scare me a whole lot because my mom really shielded me from those but having two older sisters and being a child of the 80s, uh, my older sisters would be like, you're watching this movie with me. Don't tell mom and dad. And I would say the first movie that really traumatized me as a kid. And I'm talking like traumatized me, fucked me up was A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, really? nice. So wow. 84 VHS, my mom and dad's living room, blinds drawn, curtains drawn, completely fucked up. And I would say the second one that really fucked me up. And I remember it was like my seventh or eighth. No, wait. Yeah. Seventh or eighth birthday was Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter. Wow. And um, 
it it fucked me up like as a little kid i'm not gonna lie like had to sleep with mommy fucked up <laughs> and um so i really like the way my mind works i i like no horror no horror no horror it's scary 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 what you know what i know as now as an adult you know was like you know it induced anxiety and 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 all kinds of shit and um I think somewhere along the way, and again, I, I'm going to get deep here. My parents had split up. We would go with my dad for the weekend. He would do the dad weekend thing and take us to movies. And and I think it was just kind of a perfect lightning of being the age I was, going to dad's house on the weekend, having a good time. But he took us to see the Dream Warriors. And whereas I was completely terrified of Freddy Krueger and anything to do with Nightmare on Elm Street, it was like the Dream Warriors was this fantasy film right like it wasn't yeah. just a horror movie it was it, it was cool uh it, it was a, a fantasy horror movie and i was like wow i like this and then i've always liked heavy metal because and then Dawkins plays at the end the dream warrior song and i'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like the lightning struck you know and i i think after then just being a being a little kid growing up with the kids i did in the neighborhood completely suburban america even though i was in new mexico uh we could go to the local mom and pop video store and rent whatever fucking movies we wanted and it was on we just from the age of 11 and 12 but and it we got hard like it was faces of death it was i spit on your grave you know uh, all those fucked up movies um you know toxic avenger and 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 i think at that time at that age um i just fell in love with it yeah. that's it and it, it just it it was it it slowly became like a security blanket that's so awesome. something yeah so something that was like completely traumatic to me as a kid that would keep me up at night i mean i would look at the back of a cover when i was eight years old and it would scare the shit out of me that I was, I was just, I mean, you can't call, I mean, I could call myself, my little kid self a little pussy, but you know, I was like completely scared. Right. And as I grew up, it was just like, wow. And then it became a security blanket. Then it became an obsession. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that probably and led to podcasting. Were you going to say something, Scott? Sorry. I was like, hence why we are all here. <laughs> That's true. Right. That's true. Right. So how did you get into podcasting? I know you have a current podcast now, but was there a history prior to that? Yeah, there was. Um, so this goes way back, and this is where I met Xander, actually, a, a buddy of mine um, who, who I had met at, at, at work. Um, he, he introduced me to a website, and this is before social media. So maybe MySpace is around, but you're, before any social media was around, he introduced me to a website called Killer Reviews. And Killer Reviews, um, he's like, bro, it's for guys like us. You know, it, it was old message boards right i don't know if you guys remember the messaging boards yeah the board days. Yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah so you know the, and, and whoever threw his name is uh greg dumont dropping names butcher uh ran the killer reviews website and uh it, it I, I don't know it was just uh the message boards i always put crazy shit like i do now right no. but, it was, <laughs> 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 but it was the wild west right like so yeah. anything went I mean, within reason, there was no right? Zuckerberg then. No one holding you back, Andre. No, but I mean, I have. To, I don't have lines. Like I'm not putting fucking animal torture videos up or anything like that. <laughs> you know true. what I mean? Yes, yeah, so I, I have my lines, but I was just putting like puke videos ad nauseum, you know, <laughs> shit like that. So, um, anyways, uh, Killer Reviews had a really successful podcast, one of the original horror podcasts out there. Um, it doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. Um, I mean, it was well before its time. And so the guy that ran the podcast, his name was Butcher. Uh, he originally did it with his brother. His brother dropped off and then he ran with it with Mr. Greg Mo, Greg Mo Roberts. I think I've dropped name dropped him. He's from Canada as well. Yes, you have. Yeah. And uh, Xander, Xander Kane. He was on there too. And everybody, oh, we clamored for the Killer Reviews podcast. Oh, the new podcast is coming out. Just just a group of horror nerds. And um, Butcher hit me up and he's like, dude you're so fucking funny and i'm like oh thank you and he's like just the shit you fucking post just your responses to people he goes i want you on the podcast just a guest nice i said okay cool and then i think after the third show he's like he kind of gave me the official invite you know he's like all right dude so i'm like i'm a made man now you know <laughs> um and then um you know personal shit happens uh the the podcast went defunct uh he had to end it and that's where me and xander him and i always got along really well and probably about a year after the podcast ended is when we started the cemetery gates okay. and i mean i was a novice didn't know how to edit didn't know how to do shit just 
never went to school for it. Just went, just learned, 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 and uh, did some other podcasts that are no longer around. And so here I am. So I'll ask one quick other little question and you can provide as much as you want. You also have this little thing called Android Vision. Right. So when did Android Vision fit into this whole thing? <sighs> okay, so we will go back to Killer Reviews, but we'll go a little bit, fur- a little bit further back. Um, and this is going to kind of tie into the original question that you had for me uh, regarding the, the when did you fall in love with horror? Um, so I, I will go back to that a little bit. When, when I was a little kid, obviously, uh, uh, even though I say I was terrified of horror and different things like that, uh, when I was, I specifically remember in kindergarten going to the library, right? Teachers take your little kids to the library. And I remember seeing a section of yellow, of orange spined books, and uh, they were these um, monster books. Like you had Frankenstein, you had the werewolf. Um, and I'll have to I'll have to remember the name. I, I have actually procured one book because they're in the hundreds of dollars right now. If you need to collect them, oh wow, um, something house. I forget. But anyways, each cover. I even tattooed the Wolfman right here. Very That's nice. on the cover of the cover of the book. Um, so anyways. I wanted to look like the wolf man or something weird when I was a little kid. And I just, I just fell in love with horror. I had, a, I had a, my birthdays around Halloween time. I remember painting my face up and telling my mom, I want to rent, I want to rent really fun, weird movies for my friends to watch. So it kind of started there. And then fast forwarding back to killer reviews. Um, they used to do, cause it was so interactive that website butcher set up this thing called KR movie night. So killer reviews movie night. And he did it every night, Friday night, he set up a chat room, you know, the guy wrote script, built programs. He knew what he was doing. And then he eventually handed me the reins. He's like, dude, I, I want you to run my killer reviews movie night. And it was kind of like old school chat room. Everybody jumps in, everybody, uh, you know, chats and we watch a horror movie. I eventually from that point started making graphics for it, uh, where you kind of see uh, those old school drive-in double feature theater stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I started making graphics for killer reviews as far as that is concerned. Like, hey, you know, tonight, double feature, blah, 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 blah. So um, after killer reviews, killer reviews went defunct. uh, The guy who originally uh, started editing my stuff, his name is Sean. Um, He doesn't have anything to do with the podcast world or Android vision anymore. Just he had kids so no time yeah good guy though get that um yeah so sean uh he said hey man i said yeah because we used to do a a podcast called android virus and sean show which was insane um (laughs) yeah so sean actually had to stop doing that show for you know the same reason didn't have time he goes but he goes dude you need to do a fucking horror show like killer reviews but you need to host it let's like let's do this shit like so got everything built a set uh built miniatures and kind of wrote what we wanted sean and i have a really good back and forth uh you think i'm funny (laughs) i i wish i wish sean would jump back into the podcast world but anyways um kind of started with sean he's he encouraged me to do it he's like dude this is you just do your fucking persona dude do your crazy shit because you guys kind of get a little bit of it on the other podcast, but yeah, oh yeah, it allows me to channel or filter what's crazy in here yeah. into something, right? Um, because I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a family man. I fucking work forty or eighty hours every two weeks, you know. Um, yeah. and so people don't see that part of me, right? Yeah. Uh, they they don't see that you know I got kids and bills and all that shit. So this shit is just uh something to help me get all this crazy out <laughs> well you say crazy but andrew you are one of the most creative funny yeah. talented people i've ever met it Agreed. really is a privilege to know you and Thank to you. get gone into over the last two years and one day i will make it to new mexico <laughs> one day andrew and, we're gonna get you're, gonna, and you're gonna be hair. like and you're gonna be like you're gonna be like everybody else when you see me be like dude you're short i'm, I'm gonna like, be like <laughs> you were the short scott look find someone as short as you better hey, 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 so, with me. so so uh android vision it, it, it kind of took off and it took a life of its own and it's actually changed a lot of cast members and if, if anybody out there is wondering what it is it's a horror hosted web show uh like elvira like joe bob briggs right. like all that fun shit uh we do it once a month um i write it um i produce it um i recently started directing and editing it on my own as well so it's it's been a process and 
I find that like the more hands that I have help with is it's great, but then, you know, you just kind of meet people who kind of fall out and I just, and it's cool. And I don't, I don't hate anybody, but you know, it's um, you just, people fall out, people move yeah. away, you know, shit happens. And it's just kind of, I find it's better in my own hands, you know, For and sure. it's not like, yeah, it's not, it a control, and it's not a control thing. Like, Oh, it's gotta be my way. It's just, I need people dependable. I need people who are willing to work and, and, and I pay, you know, I, I do pay. Hi, puppy. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, shit. I didn't know he paid. <laughs> you got to get on duty for not paying us for It's Not Horror. That's yeah, no I shit, right? Say. Yeah, I mean, it's it's time. It's it's um, it's um a hobby, but it's a little bit more than that. And you know what? To be honest with you, I have the most encouraging, awesome bitch of a wife. <laughs> yeah, Rachel's pretty badass. Yeah, like, right? She is amazing. She's uh, like, she's like the queen. Like, honestly. She, yeah like think of like if danny trejo was a female maybe the <laughs> yeah, attitude like only hot though yeah but hot like yeah. rachel's hot right so let's make sure like she's a good <laughs> she looking hot. lady yeah, right but, so uh, honestly like i i really have to like i if I, if i didn't have like her support right yeah. and it's it's like you do you you do what makes you happy and then it's I don't have a wife who's like, we got to go do this. We got to do that. You know, we got to go to church today. You know, it's like, yeah. no, she's like, you do what makes you happy. And, and 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 then she's also the person who reels me back in, who yeah. is like, hey, slow down, you know, which which is what I need. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Podcasting too much, putting a little bit too much energy into this. Reel it back a little. You're going to burn yourself out or, you know, whatever the case may be. She's. She's my right hand woman, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but she, cool. she re- but she refuses to be on camera. She refuses to podcast. She refuses to do any of that shit. She she's not a part of any of the process other than she is the person who grounds me, which is really cool. So, yeah, yeah, so she, we need that. And we've spoken to her a handful of times um, sure, yeah. over the years, <laughs> and she's really cool. Yeah. She's really, really the, cool. The stories she has to say. <laughs> yes. She's a, she and you and her are like the dynamite couple. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, thank it you. really means a lot to us, Android. You really truly are one of our favorite people. So absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So and we chose our topic. So on with thinking of you in mind. So Scotty, why mm. don't you introduce our topic and what your number five is? All right. So the topic uh, is top five 1970s films. We'll do uh, round robin style. So I'll go first, my number five, then Android, then Heather. We are going to save the honorable mentions for after we do our top five. That way we can just kind of give some shout outs. Um, But yeah, I will start it off with my number five, which is I'll go with the tagline first. Ask her no questions. She'll tell you no lies. Ask her too many questions and somebody dies. And that is The Little Girl Who Lives Down the Lane from 1976. Hmm. A a very young uh, Jodie Foster in one of her first ever movies. I I, I think probably like her second film. But holy shit, I watched this last year for the first time ever. And it's one of those films that has just stuck with me since. Like the more I sat with it, the more and more I loved it. It's because she... Is she's a young girl who is uh, supposed to be living with her parents and all of a sudden her parents are not there and she's by herself and these adults and neighbors keep coming by and asking questions and just some of them mysteriously disappear and it's just a very interesting like horror thriller drama like if you have not seen this it is very well acted well performed well shot very intriguing story and for being 13 years old Jodie Foster was an incredible little actress and it's no wonder where she is today like I love this movie that's cool Hmm. I still haven't watched it Scotty and I need to you've talked about it a lot though me neither that's that sounds cool one for the very good (laughs) yeah for sure uh I need to check that out I I like 70s movies and I'm glad you guys had me in mind and for this almost impossible task yeah, this uh, was yeah we really wanted one. to make it stressful for you so we <laughs> hope we did that was absolutely our goal so i um i swear to god i started off with a list of about 20 movies 30 movies yeah. and yep. i'm like fuck how do i take this out fuck like it, I mean, it took me like a good week but i finally whittled it down to uh in a list that i did not want to give your listeners or most like horror podcast l- listeners uh, uh, that is, um, I don't know, we'll say as much as horror, 
is not vanilla. I didn't want to give you guys a vanilla list. I didn't. Oh, we I know. Didn't, yeah. I'll say that's. <laughs> yeah, I'll say that I forgot to mention. Here. Right, I was gonna say we knew you would bring a yeah, unique list. We knew. And yeah. like, Very that cool. Was, and that's kind of one of the things I do when I do the top five list is because top five it's very hard because it could just be all the big hitters that you know and that's everybody could have that list so it's like yeah. I yeah. usually will cut most of them out sprinkle a couple in my top five but I want to bring stuff that's a little less known yeah there you go so I'm gonna start off and I'm going in order of the year right so uh my my first pick uh is 1970s Equinox, Equinox. um Yes, and uh, the the uh, tagline of the movie is the evil devil cult that enslaves and destroys Equinox, a cult barrier between good and evil, supernatural. Um, now, not a lot of no well-known actors in here other than the guy who just passed away from WKRP in Cincinnati. I'm probably aging myself. Uh, Frank Bonner. Uh, uh, he, so he was um, he, uh, he was in it. But so I'm going to preface this with this. This movie uh, has influenced a lot, and I will say that the popular, huge hit for the genre, which is Evil Dead, would not exist if it was not for this film. Really? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I actually had showed this movie on Android Vision last year sometime, and my friend, who is a huge Evil Dead fan, right in the middle, is like, got really sad. He's like, wait, Evil Dead's not original? Like, the whole like <laughs> Book of the Dead so basically, this th this film was originally a short film uh, in 1969, uh, and the guys that made it uh, actually um, got the money and made it to a full feature film. And pretty much what the movie is about is a book of the dead and um, a professor in the forest fucking around with it and oh. breaks a bail down between this world and another world. And creatures start coming through this world and either possessing people and you're seeing f giants come through the other world, flying fucking creatures with talons. And um, basically this other world maybe could be hell. It could be another dimension. We don't know what this other world is, but he breaks the barrier down between this world and that world in a forest. And uh, hmm, a pair of similarities here. <laughs> uh, four college students go to try to search for their professor, um, but you know, to see where he's at, and and they can't find him. And uh, as they turn around, you see these tentacles come up and en engulf the cabin uh, that the professor was in. And uh, and and they're walking, and they're like, "Hey, what is this cabin doing? Here? Or not this cabin? This castle doing here from another dimension? Like, when was there a castle ever built in these woods?" And it's it, it, okay. So the graphics in it, a lot of stop motion animation, a lot of oh, forced sweet. perspective, uh, giants, uh, and and other worlds. I would even throw Phantasm as taking from this movie because when they hop into the other reality, it's red with the Love druids it. walking. Um, so I'm not going to give a lot, a whole lot away about it. There's some really fucking cool things in it, but it's 1970s Equinox. I highly fucking suggest it. And I will say that this goddamn movie has influenced things from Phantasm all the way up to the Evil Dead. Um, it's amazing. That's really you've cool. you've sold me on this movie. I'm going to be watching this as soon as I freaking can. Like yeah. probably tonight is what yeah. he's going to do. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Yeah, That's Scott's awesome. gonna be like Scott down your alley, bro. Oh yeah, Sweet. it is a yeah, total Scotty movie. And, and again, yeah. the graphics are not that great. The acting isn't even that great, but. Um, it's stop motion animation, Ray Harryhausen type of shit. But and I and it's, love that shit. And it, it's a sl it, it, it's a slow build, but once it gets there, it's 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 cool. Um, but yeah, check it out. That that's one of my tops of the seventies, Equinox. So there you awesome. have it. Nice. Thank you, Android. So the seventies is actually not my favorite era of films. Now that being said. That was before I started to watch more movies from the 1970s. <laughs> so over the past two years, since I got into podcasting, I have really pushed myself to go beyond my comfort zone. So I have watched actually a lot of 1970 movies, uh, comparably to where I was at two years ago. So my list will probably not be as exciting, um, but it won't be like, you know, the major franchises. I, I, well, maybe one or two, but um I have some other stuff on my list. And the first one is The Wicker Man, 1970. Nice. And I have never seen the remake. I hear it's absolutely dreadful, so I probably won't. I love this original movie with Sergeant Howie going to this island. And what I like about 70s horror is that there's a lot more character development and subtle horror. 
The Wicker Man doesn't necessarily start off being scary right away. It's more of a mystery. It's creepy. Mm -hmm. Where is this kid? What are all these creepy things that are happening? Um, Christopher Lee does an excellent job as I have the name here as Lord Summerside. Excellent. Beautiful dialogue. Beautifully shot. As the movie goes, it gets increasingly creepier and just more disturbing. And I feel like that's something the 70s captured really well. Not having the special effects that we have nowadays, they could just rely on CGI. They could be like, I'll just throw some CGI and make it look really cool and that will be enough. You had to rely on line delivery, plot development. And of course, I think the ending scene of The Wicker Man stands out. I don't want to give anything away for people who haven't seen it. So that's definitely- Is it the- Is it the- uh... My eyes, the, the bees. bees. Yes, but that's but that's the new one, right? The Nicolas yes. Cage. The yeah. bees okay. is the, the Nicolas Cage part um, okay. for the remake. But <laughs> it is an incredible, well acted film, beautifully filmed. Um, it's a longer film. It's about two hours, I believe, in length. So you know you are investing in it in a period of time. But I definitely think if you like mystery and horror and cults mixed in together, it's your jam. Awesome. Nice. This one is one of my all-time favorite folklore, folk horror films, and that just missed my list. It like, is. I'm I glad was, I included I, it then. Yeah, because I wanted to add it, but I'm going, oh, it's just so tough to decide what I wanted to keep, what I didn't want to keep. Yeah, I love this freaking movie. Well, that's the point of our list, right? Exactly. Uh, so yeah, I will go around to number four and kind of got sort of briefly mentioned earlier, but it is, I'll do the tagline again, just because I'm having fun reading this tagline on letterbox uh if this one doesn't scare you you're already dead <laughs> good old 1979 phantasm um what's the like this is probably like one of the two bigger named ones on my list um but phantasm is just one of those films i had to add just because it's so nightmarish and creepy and just so freaking out there and weird like it's it's not really there's not many films that kind of take on the persona of that this film and the franchise end up becoming it is just so freaking bizarre and is something i don't think could have ever been made now just because it's definitely a child of that late 70s early 80s fucking drug rattled mind just <laughs> it's and with uh freaking uh angus scrim playing the tall man god so just creepy the way he acts throughout this whole film like he just he acts otherworldly and just the way he looks the way he walks the way he talks everything about him is just creepy and boy uh, boy yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's got just some amazing lines even throughout the whole franchise and like i yeah don coscarelli freaking knit, knocked it out of the park with this film it is something that i love to watch at least at least once a year, like I go through the entire franchise because it's just so crazy and wild. And you have such amazing characters as Reggie and fucking uh, Michael. And it's just amazing, amazing film. I I mean, obviously, a lot of people probably seen this being horror fans, especially if you've been in the genre a long time. But it's one that I had to bring to the table. For sure. Awesome. Yeah, that, that was uh, going to go into an honorable mention so nice <laughs> yeah that's i like i like I, that movie holds a special place in my heart and mr xander kane was nice enough to procure i think i'm using the right word a original art piece of phantasm for me oh nice but there but there was like 200 222 made or something like that and i got number 11 that's awesome and sent it to me in the mail take it rolls out like a scroll and and uh oh, has like cool the, goes has the the ball going into some guy's head and uh my wife was nice enough to frame it for me so um yeah it's it's really cool but uh yeah like in the car in phantasm Fuck. yes that's a star oh, dude, that too. car is amazing isn't that a barracuda 1971 yeah that's right baby if you're if you like muscle cars that yep. movie that movie's uh, all about it too so oh, very fuck cool yes man. it is <laughs> yeah uh, so what is your number four, Android? All right. So my number four, um, and uh, fuck you, Nudie. I'm just going uh, <laughs> to, go, we're going to go like, th we'll go like that. But this is 1971's Let's Scare Jessica to Death. Nice. I, I was trying to get a chance to watch that this week, but I did not have the time. Have either of you seen it? I have not. Heather? No, but I've heard of it and I need to watch it. Yeah, so um, it's basically, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Um, first things first, I, I'm not quite sure about the release of the movie. All I know is, and this is just kind of a funny little backstory. Um, I am like, okay, so I married an older, I'd say older woman, right? So like Rachel is five or six years older than me. 
so a lot of the girls like that I know, like when I was like in middle school or whatever, were a lot older than me. But anyways, uh, so a lot of these girls have memories of movies that were on TV or late at night more than I do. And when I had mentioned this movie to Rachel and another friend of ours, Sabrina, they're like, oh, my God, I remember that movie used to play late at night on Channel 4, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, what? They play this movie on Channel 4 late at night? And what was really funny is I had a Facebook memory pop up from 11 years ago, and one of our local stations was playing Let's, Let's Scare Jessica to Death at 2, 2 p.m. in the afternoon on a Sunday. I was wow. like, what the, what the fuck? This is weird. <laughs> so anyways, uh, basically, uh, Let's Scare Jessica to Death, it, it's about a, a, a woman who... First things first, it's it's a horror drama, supernatural film, so it's not fast-paced. There's no gore in it. It all depends on dialogue and storytelling and cinematography. Um, Nudie hates this movie because he thinks it's boring as shit. But like I tell Nudie and some other people who really hate movies like this, I have to tell them, hey, man, some of us have a palate for fine wine and some of us don't. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, they, that's just a fuck you to me. You're telling me I don't have bad, good taste. And I'm just like, look, man, I'm not saying you don't have good taste. All of us just have different tastes. And some of our palate is a little bit more richer than others. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, funny. so it's, yeah, I know. It's a fucking uh, backhanded compliment or whatever. <laughs> fucking total passive aggressive bullshit. But anyways. Um, so yeah, so basically it's about a woman who was released from a mental hospital and her husband had to give up his job, uh, in the New York Philharmonic, uh, to take care of her. So there's already some tension there. There's already some, you know, the rolling of the eyes, I had to give up my life for you, but, and she's a fragile person. You can tell. So, uh, they buy, they buy a house, um, uh, in like, you know, some back backwoods area and, and, and they're kind of hippie friends helping them put the house together and they're just trying to make a new life. Right. And it's about her. It's about her. We want to make sure she's fragile. We love her. We want to make sure there's some weird tension between her and the hippie friend. And uh, they pick up a girl uh, from the uh, who's hitchhiking and they're like, yeah, come along. It's the seventies. Let's hang out. Let's swing. I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah. So, so the, the girl, uh, she's, her sanity's already in question. Right. And she's seeing things. She's seeing a, a girl dressed in a white dress coming out of a lake. She's seeing, she doesn't know what she's seeing, but her sanity's already in question. And we're questioning her sanity as well. Um, and her husband's already questioning her sanity. Uh, the hippie friend, he, he's, he's trying to be as thoughtful and helpful with her as he can. And then they bring this third party in who is kind of low key seducing everybody, including her husband, including the hippie friend, including maybe her, we don't Mm -hmm. know. And then the, the lady from the lake could be seducing her. We don't know. But then as you kind of go throughout the movie, is Jessica really crazy? You don't know. Uh, But um, the town is just full of men. There's no women in this town other than this ghost chick from the lake and the the girl, the hitchhiker they picked up and Jessica. And slowly just stuff starts kind of unraveling. You're seeing weird things. She's picturing people dead, but are they really dead? And then she starts noticing that all the men in this town have this weird like slice on their neck or weird little cuts on their neck and is the hitchhiker a vampire Hmm. and is her husband. um, And then she starts to see the husband has a slit on her neck. The, the, The hippie friend has a slit on the neck. Um, I don't want to really give away where this goes, but, um, it's just a weird fucking dreamy twilighty, not like not in the movie twilight, but that weird dreamy Mm seventies, you know, that Mm -hmm. weird feel to it. Um, completely story driven. Like I said, um, kind of, kind of ambiguous. The ending is very ambiguous. It leaves you up to, could this have happened? Is it in her head? Is this really what the fuck is going on? And that's what I really liked about it because, the movie gives enough, um, what can I say? What's the word I'm looking for? The, the movie respects the viewer enough to make up your own mind. Awesome. Whereas nice. a lot of movies don't do that, in my opinion. So this movie really respects you as the viewer. You come up with the conclusion. What do you think happened? Um, that's and that's why I really like this movie. So there you go. That's my pick. That's awesome. Thanks so much for bringing it to the table. Yes, um, 
mine is not going to be a surprise to Scotty because he doesn't like this movie, but it is Don't Look Now from 1973 yep. with Mr. Donald Sutherland. I um, tried. And I tried. <laughs> Julia Christie. It is very much a horror drama as well. Probably more of a drama. Uh, you know, I win definitely probably not slap horror on this for everybody, but <clears throat> I saw this movie for the first time earlier this year when I was trying to expand my 1970s watching and I just bought into this couple. Uh, Donald Sutherland's performance and Julia Christie's performance is fucking incredible. And the grieving that they go through and the loss of their daughter and the mm. path that she takes to get closure regarding the loss of their daughter is intense and really is the downfall of, of what happens to this couple and then a very tragic um, upsetting event happens at the end. <laughs> Uh, something that stands out to me in this movie that is not necessarily horror is the realistically of the realisticness of their lovemaking scene. Um, incredibly, <laughs> incredibly yeah. realistic. Um, and they both said they had a lot of fun filming it. And I can imagine they did. Were they, uh, really, make, were they really making love possible? Uh, you know what? They've never become clean and really said what they were doing for sure. And um, Donald Sutherland was pretty fucking hot, and so was she. So I know if I was either one of them, I would definitely be banging. Um, <laughs> for sure. But this movie is very much a slow burn. Um, you, you do kind of have to go into it prepared for very much a relationship grieving film that's going to build on mm. grief, basically. Mm. Uh, mm. So be warned. But I think it's one of the better made films that have come out in the 70s for myself personally. So that is my number hmm. four. Awesome. Yep, I, I tried it this one. Uh, I gave it a second watch this year because the first time I watched it, I just couldn't get into it. And the second time watch, I liked it a little more. But yeah, I, I think it's just the story. And like you said, it is a very, very, very slow burn. But I do have to say the performances are out of this world. And it's such a well-made movie. And I can see why it is on your list and why so many people in the horror genre love it. it yeah, it just did not work for me, unfortunately. I tried. That's okay. Hey, you know what? We give you credit for trying, sir. Not everyone's palate exactly. is as fine as mine. And it exactly. Is clearly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, you guys Scotty, can steal that one. Have it. It's yours. <laughs> We're going to use it with beauty all the time. Um, Scotty, you. bring Scotty. us in with your number three. All right. So my number three, I kind of briefly teased Heather about this one before saying that I, one of my favorite movies of this decade, and that is is well I'll, once again i'll start off with the uh, tagline she's living in the gateway to hell and that is 1977's the sentinel mm. um right off the bat i have to say the cast in this is absolutely freaking insane you have chris sarandon john carradine ava gardner uh burgess meredith uh see uh beverly d'angelo and freaking jeff goldblum it's mm. freaking stacked cast and it's about this uh woman that's looking uh this actress that is trying to find an apartment and she gets this apartment where a lot of the people that are there are very weird and eccentric and as the movie progresses, you basically find out that this apartment has a nun living in the very top floor by herself, and she's a blind nun that's always staring out the window. Hmm. And you find out later that she is basically the guardian of this apartment because this apartment is on the gateway to hell. And yeah, that is why you see a lot of weird eccentric characters in this. And it is so just weird and creepy and the performances are all super good. And um, yeah, there are some awkward moments too where you get like, Beverly uh like she's going to visit like her lesbian neighbors and like Beverly Beverly D'Angelo is one of the girlfriends and as she's talking to them all of a sudden Beverly D'Angelo just starts masturbating in front of her and just like weird shit's going on in this like it's wait just... are you are you saying this movie has a Beverly D'Angelo masturbation scene <laughs> yeah. yep like she's topless and basically just wearing Andrew like spandex, watching us tonight. <laughs> wearing spandex Rachel and with spandex <laughs> 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 uh so yeah it is uh very <laughs> weird and unsettling and creepy i watched this probably about i'd say about 10 or so years ago and it's just something that i have to always revisit now because it's just so just kind of just disturbing in a way and it's kind of reminds me of like this could have fit in with like a lucio falci uh gates of hell trilogy with less gore hmm. it's just yeah out of the just very out of this world just creep factor uh, but yeah, that is my number three, The Sentinel. Nice. I think I've seen it. I, was like, I wouldn't be surprised if you have. I think I have. 
Yeah, I think I have. Um, so I'm doing number three now. Yep, you are. All right, cool. So um, I'm going to start this off with, uh, do you, again, I'm going in order. So uh, this is another 1971 movie. I had two 1971 movies. Obviously, let's scare Jessica to death. And this is my next one. It's a psychological thriller, actually. Uh, but I, I think this movie is really horrific in its own right, which is 1971 Sam Peckinpah's Straw Dogs. Um, oh, I've nice heard a lot pick. about Straw Dogs. That's cool. Yeah, so it it stars Dustin Hoffman, a very young Dustin Hoffman, and and if you guys don't know who Sam Peckinpah is, he he's obviously he died in 1984, but. I mean, he he wrote uh, the Wild Bunch. I mean, he 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 has written a, written a lot of movies, uh, but just the way he directs and he writes, it's just it's very in your face. And he's well known to put his actors through a lot of fucking grimy shit during filming. Like we're gonna get some realism out of you guys. Uh, so R.I.P. to Mister Sam Peckinpah. So uh, so essentially, uh, this movie is noted for its violent sequences and a couple of. And I will say, uh, they say complicated rape scenes. Mm. Yes, very some very complicated rape scenes in this movie, and 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 we'll get a little bit more a little bit more into that. But essentially, the movie is about um, Dustin Hoffman is a writer, um, and he uh, moves to the English countryside with his beautiful wife, who's English, and uh, the town is basically kind of rednecky, kind of backwoodsy. Um, and it's just well known that these dudes are just weird rednecks, backwoods dudes. Um, she does have a brief history with one of the guys. And so what Dustin Hoffman does is he hires a crew of guys to rebuild, uh, because it's her family's property to rebuild, uh, the farm. So these guys are rebuilding the farm. Um, but they're just kind of like those, again, the English version of good old boys, you know, whose dick's bigger. And they think Dustin Hoffman's kind of a lesser than because he's kind of short and he's got glasses and he's a writer, but yet he's got money and he's got appeal and he's able to score this really hot babe who was the hottest babe of the town and she's moved away to America and now she's back and, and, but she's unsatisfied. Dustin Hoffman is way too much into his work and he's a little bit of a dick. He's a little bit of a dick to her too. Um, he's kind of smarmy, but not like completely hateable. Um, but uh, she gets bored one day and she flashes her tits to one of the guys working on the barn house and he gets the wrong idea. And uh, but she is lonely. Right. So this is kind of where it goes into the complicated rape scene. She kind of, you don't want to it's weird. You want to really be careful with this topic and the subject because yeah, of course. She didn't invite it, but yet this guy has the wrong idea. Hey, she flashed me her tits. She wants to fuck me, right? So they d- develop a plan to take Dustin Hoffman out hunting. Have you ever been hunting before, mate? No, 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 no. Let's go hunting. So they go hunting, and then one of the then two of the guys take off and stay behind, and they go back to the cabin and they rape her, and it happens. And um, but she's very torn. And she's very drawn because she was attracted to one of the guys. And it really kind of cro- it, it blurries that line of, did she like it? Did, did, did she ask for it? It's, it's so very weird. much a 1970s film that questions, like, obviously we all know consent is consent, but this sure. film is exploring something from a different time period. Right. And, right. and asking, you know, did she want to have sex and then was choosing not to because of how it looked in society? Like it's actually really examining what yeah. exactly sexual relationships are, right? For nineteen seventies, right? Like let's yeah, remember nineteen seventies, absolutely, again, right? So and yeah, and it happens again, but with the other guy, like, but yeah. she kind of welcomed that one though because she had sex with him, but so she had sex with a rapist. So it's but that one was a little bit more. Ah, it's weird. You know what I mean? That's like and a really it, complicated film, to be honest. Very, with you, very, right? very complicated. But it it really it really culminates at the end because there's a death and there's the the revenge from these guys and 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 it, I mean the end is insane. The last half hour and forty five of this movie movie mi- minutes of this movie is so relenting, insane because it just becomes a home invasion film, and wow. it becomes this couple defending themselves, and it becomes 
it's it's just insane um i don't want to give again i when i do my reviews or when i do my presentations of movies i don't like to give away too many spoilers but i like to give the gist of the movie um there was a remake of this movie in 2011 Mm -hmm. with uh a a lot of actors james martson stellan skarsgård um james woods was in it um a lot of actors was were in the remake and the remake is okay it is okay um i i will won't shit on the remake but the original is so fucking good um and it's 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 a great 1970s film and it really does examine that just what you said heather like it's a time capsule of looking at sexuality and consent and everything in the 70s like whether we want to admit it or not how we look at it in 19 2021 and how it was looked at in 1971 are going to be two very different things Oh yeah. I think it's good that you gave the spoilers because I think people should know what they're going into. Oh yeah. Like they yeah. should know there's graphic rape repeatedly in this and that there is a conflicting of whether that sex is appropriate or not. Like there's obviously some conversations that she's even having within herself on yeah. her own sexual, you yeah. know, attraction and, and what she's choosing to consent to or not to consent to. Like it's a heavy film. That it I didn't is. realize it was that heavy. So I'm glad you gave me the heads up because I didn't know going into it, right? It's a heads up. You'd be like, Android, what'd you do? No, I think it's good though. I think it's a good exploration. Nothing is wrong with exploring that topic and also seeing how it was explored in 1971. Yeah, and and you know. And I, and I will tell you that uh, this movie was a nominated for some Academy Awards. Yeah, I remember um, hearing about that. It was probably well acted and well done. Yeah, it's it's heavy. Yeah. And it's fucking violent. It's really yeah, violent. So, it sounds violent. Yeah, yeah I, so check it out. Yeah, I ended up sure. uh I ended up seeing the remake. And yeah, like you said, it was okay. Um I do want I do at some point want to check out the original. I did not realize that it was that much uh darker and uh harder to watch compared to the remake because the remake really wasn't that hard. It, tough, well, it covered the topic but they you yeah. know it was more well, modern era and and Thanks. if you really get right. into like the the nerdy like the nerdy cinephiles like people who are really into like j- more than just horror you just na- mentioned the name sam peckinpah who a- as a director and and you know the guy legendary legendarily did put his actors really through a lot of shit and and not in a mean way he just wanted to bring more out into his actors mm-hmm. more method um and it's a rough movie and 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 dustin hoffman i mean is in it too so i mean he he really lends that that star credence to this film as well and he acted the sh- everybody acts the shit out of this movie um so highly suggested really good for 70s film so yeah all right absolutely. that's my number three all right that's Heather. awesome thanks for bringing that and i think also for our listeners we got to remember that four years later we had solo okay solo came <laughs> in 1975 yeah. right so the 70s were a different time period so like any, but those films still have their time capsule of history of where they were at at that time. And I think this would be watched in their purity form. And, yeah. ha, you know, ha, that's important. Have we, have we noticed the theme of like in the seventies, like rape, feminism. Very and, much so. And the devil. Yeah. <laughs> and the yes. devil, right? And they, shit eating in solo. So. <laughs> manja, manja. But no, you're right. There's a lot manja. of rape stories in the 70s and a lot of it blurs the lines between consent and non-consent and they just didn't use those words back then no right? yeah. it, it was just different and i'm glad i'm really glad you brought that one to the table it was a good discussion cool. um so for mine not nearly as exciting but yet again another <laughs> slow burn it's the tenant with roman Polanski. nice uh, mm. I I just saw this movie this year. I was asked to watch it for another podcast that I'm on, and fuck, I loved it. And I didn't think I was gonna like it. Like I went into this film being like, oh, Roman Polanski, okay, holy fuck. <laughs> this uh, this is a an immigrant in Paris, Paris, and he rents an apartment. And similar to kind of what you were talking about earlier, the Sentinel, uh, nothing is as it seems in this apartment building. He finds out that the woman that was living there previously had killed herself. And he slowly feels as though his neighbors are driving him to do the same. Mm. And this movie really shows the collapse of somebody's psyche. And Roman Polanski fucking nails it. He is an incredible actor. And he just completely hits this out of the park. Um, I I really strongly recommend it to people. If you're a Roman Polanski fan, if you like strong, strong uh, slow burns, if you like apartment horror, this is right up there for you. This is a perfect example of dealing with neighbors and how 
people can start to manipulate you and cultish stuff. Like it is, it is all that in a bag of chips. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, please do. Yeah, th- I was wondering where this would land on your list. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was just, uh, I, this is one that I still need to watch. Like I was once again, trying to get to it this week. Just, I did not want to watch it at work. Cause I know it's one of those, you got to pay more attention to. So I did not do it there. And Oh, you do that too, it. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when the time is slow i will jump in and throw on like some type of horror film <laughs> yeah me too uh so yeah i guess i will go into my number two which uh we will start off once again with the tagline this tagline is definitely uh one that will throw you off from what the movie actually is they tampered with nature now they must pay the price ah uh, 1974's Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, yeah. also known as uh, Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, also yeah. known as Don't Open the Window, also known as Nancy Deve Profanere El Sonno de Morti. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my all time favorite zombie movies. Mm. Um, I love that this is not like uh, the zombie events in this film don't happen in your typical fashion of most zombie films. It is done by radiation caused by this machine that is trying to get rid of insects and pests. And somehow this radiation wakes the dead. And these dead are your typical old school Romero style, slow moving zombies, um, except they have these like creepy red eyes and are just very vicious and violent. And like the story is just absolutely incredible. I, I cannot recommend this one enough, but yeah, this is one, I think, because uh, the only thing that I say is against this is that the main guy is kind of an asshole. And <laughs> he's one that you're kind of rooting for. And he's just kind of a piece of shit. But at the same time, like, because him and this girl get into a, I think, get into an accident, if I remember correctly. And then they go to her sister's place. And all of a sudden, like, a zombie shows up and kills her sister's husband. And then that zombie tends to follow them as they continue, like, trying to get away from it. And then, yep, yeah, more zombies appear. And more or zombies appear and yeah it's super gory uh has some defil- definite uh sexualization in it as well but this is one that if you are a zombie fan and you have not seen this i highly recommend let's sleep with corpses lie i, I felt like that this one is like and you get this with like music a lot right and 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 i don't care what type of genre of music you get like because america's over the pond right and we're over the pond and you get this with music like we throw a metal genre back at the UK and they throw a metal genre back at us and we switch it up and we keep balling it back and forth. And I feel like this was like their version of night of the living dead. Yes. You know, like this was just like, okay, this is the UK. We're, we're going to do our version of zombies. And, and I remember watching this movie and that's, that's the feel I got in it. Like the movie though. It's really good. It's really cool. But yeah, it's, it, I was like, it's very unique in the way that it takes on the zombie genre, I thought. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was really cool, too. So, awesome, good pick, man. Thank you, and uh, what is your number two, Android? All right, so I'm going to start this off with uh, the tagline. I'm going to bite from you, sir. Um, (laughs) um, And and it's going to say, Peter Fonda and Warren Oates are burning their bridges and a lot of rubber on the deadliest stretch of road in the country. Um, so this movie, again, I'm kind of like, I I can't really pick my favorite. So 1975's race with the devil, um, not sure if you guys have heard of this movie. I've heard of it. Uh, Yeah. So, uh, it's starring, uh, Peter Fonda, who was huge in the seventies, you know, he did Mm -hmm. easy writer and all that. And war notes was huge in the seventies as well. Um, look up war notes. He's in a million of fucking just B movies and Loretta Swit, who was, uh, uh, Colonel, or what was her name? She was in MASH, the blonde. Heather, oh, okay. Out. I forget. I don't remember her name. No. Yeah, so right. I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember her name. Yeah, so this is this is the second of three movies that Fonda and Oates were like in. So it's like they were buddies, you know? So uh, essentially what this movie is, is about is it starts off with uh, Peter Fonda's um, or dirt bike guy. And uh, so is War Oates. And they're kind of they compete with each other and not motor. I would say motocross. Yeah. Cause it's dirt bikes and uh Warren Oates shows up and he's like, Hey man, I got this freaking, this new, this new trailer or RV. Look at it. It's got a sink in it. You know, they're just like, 
<laughs> this badass RV and, and and they have a really good chemistry. They go back and forth. And, and I do want to preface this as this is an action horror film. Uh, one of a, one of the first of its kind in the 70s. And um, this is back in the day uh, in the 70s when you could just drive off to the side of the road and camp. Like right. there was there was no camping spots back then. I mean, you can you can kind of uh, if you ever read like uh, any like a Jack Kerouac book, he, he will tell you, man, like you could have just drove to the side of any highway or I mean, even the highways back then, but like in the side of any interstate. And if you found a spot, you liked it, you camped. And, and that's the way it was. And a lot of things have changed, obviously, since the 70s. So you kind of got that right. So them and their two girls. They got their two dirt bikes strapped on the back of their truck or their, their RV, and they're going camping. They're going on a road trip. They're getting out of Dodge. And uh, again, they find somewhere on the side of the road. This looks nice. And the girls are playing cards inside, playing pinochle or whatever. And these two guys decide to go for a walk outside, smoking cigarettes or drinking or whatever. And they notice there's like a lake, but in the middle of the lake, there's like a little, little tuft of land, right? And they're like, they notice some fire you know, like some people out there having a good time. So they pull out their binoculars. I'm like, these people are, they're, they're nude. Like, you know, they're really, they're, they're, they're like, give me those binoculars. Give me those binoculars. Let me see. They're having an orgy. And they were, they were having an orgy and they were nude. And these guys, some of them come out and they're dressed in hoods. They're like druid hoods. And then they're holding up this beautiful blonde and they're like, what the fuck are they doing? And the next thing you know, a knife plunges into the blonde and they're like, oh, what the fuck we just see? So they uh, tell the ladies, pack up, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. You know, and this is in the middle of the night and they're trying to haul out a Dodge in this campground kind of. And, and, and you know, it's, this movie was filmed in Austin, Texas, so it's more hills than campgrounds, but they're trying to drive through a lake. And next thing they know, they got fucking dudes just jumping on the trailer, trying to break into it. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh wow and they're like what the fuck you know we got to get out of here we got to get out of here so they basically just witnessed a satanic sacrifice and hmm. they go to the next rest stop fuck or windows are broken what the fuck um they get to this and and there's just creepiness going on like they go to a large pool you know at an rv and there's just like certain guys just staring just looking at them staring at them like what the fuck <laughs> so wow. yeah so they go back to their trailer they open up a rattlesnake jumps out of, of the cabinet you know uh we got to get out of here they find their little dog hung up like in the door like by it's strangled and they're like again getting chased again so they're basically being stalked by a cult and this is how the movie goes all the way from beginning to end and all four of them are getting stalked by a cult but then it just gets this kind of not Mad Maxi feel, but you know, you're the the whole cult is after them at the end of the movie, and they're just on the road. And typical seventies cars are crashing, cars are flipping, people are on top of RVs, motorcycles, people are getting shot with shotguns. Peter Fonda on top of the RV, and, and I don't want to give it away at the end of the movie, but it's called Race of the Devil. And and the reason why I picked this this movie is because I just felt like it was a really good hybrid of those really awesome road chase nineteen seventies films peppered in with like the say like being scared of satanists and cultists and different things like that um for me it's a good one right somebody might see it and be like eh, it's okay but i think it's an awesome action movie from the 70s that just really showcases that um society of people who were into motorbikes and cars and different things all those gearheads you know that really yeah really were in the 70s and then you pepper it in again with with satanism and them getting chased and it's it's a pretty relenting relenting film but it's more action than horror but definitely horror or uh horror elements but uh yeah so race with the devil check it out gets my fucking a-ok -okay. i like the shit out of it so they have it hell yeah i once again you are like everything on your list so far i have not seen so i am adding some shit to my <laughs> list right that's why we had android on here that's yep absolutely i told you i was gonna give you guys some movies that like oh we knew yeah we knew we, knew, <laughs> we know you we knew we, exactly we, Purposely, <laughs> Andrew, we knew. Okay. Okay, um, cool. You bring the knowledge. So my second was Phantasm. Uh, nice. but you've already articulated perfectly. So I had to like I had a whole bunch listed here, and I was like, oh, I am the Bill, oh the omen. Then I thought, no, no, Heather, what did you see three weeks ago that changed your life completely? <clears throat> and it was Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh -huh. I went as that as fucking what my Halloween cut first time ever. Watch three weeks ago. I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show. 1975 with Tim Curry, 
Susan Sarandon, that other guy, Richard, well, Richard O'Brien, and then Meatloaf. And anyway, I don't know what else to say about this film. I know Android's floored that this was the first time I saw this film, but it was. And I loved it. It's a horror musical done right. Uh, this, for me, sets the template for what a horror musical should be. Tim Curry's performance is off the fucking um, charts. Amazing. Um, steals the show. Uh, same with uh, Richard O'Brien. Excellent. Uh, it's Riff Raff. Um, fuck, like, there was a lot of people that were on Broadway that came on and did this this movie, and it's so good. Even that song, touch, touch, touch me. I want to be dirty. I love it. I'm like, that's me. I always want to be dirty. <laughs> so I totally feel what she's putting down. And it, just the way it moves and how it's making fun of old B science fiction, science fiction movies. And I, I just love it. And, you know, if I can't say phantasm, I'm going to say my newly loved 70 film is number two, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And, and, and not to not to mention, I mean, it's really a mad scientist film. Mm-hmm. Yes. Dr. Frankenfurter. Absolutely. And 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 how what, how ballsy of it to to really cross the barriers of sexuality Yes, huge at that time. Even now, gender, even now, and, right? yeah, and, and and gender. Um, you know, like if if even if you're you're not gay, if you weren't slightly turned on by Dr. Frankfurter's hips and the way he <laughs> right. swung those hips, then I guess you're just not a human being. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Everyone was turned on. That's why he got with the girl and the guy. Like yeah, no he got with Brad him. and. no one was resisting him right it's just such a fun film we talked about it already in our halloween episode but i fucking love it number two there you go the funny thing is uh i also that was also a first time watch for me about i'd say five weeks ago so uh my daughter bought that movie for me on vhs and it's still sealed in the box nice very cool i'm not not opening it no (laughs) No, i don't blame you little time capsule right it it absolutely is all right scotty we've come to the final event number one all right my number one it is gonna be one of the like more well-known movies out there but i cannot i could not leave this off the list because this is in my top five horror films of all time and that i will do with the tagline as always and this one will definitely give it away in space no one can hear you scream and i am talking ridley scott's 1979 alien fucking holy shit this movie is just everything that i could ever want in a science fiction horror film uh the set designs are freaking incredible the cast is amazing the creature effects and design with the hr geiger inspired like sexualized sexualized design of the beast the, this movie is everything that I've loved about horror. Um, and it's one of those that I've always talked about where you hide your creature in shadows a lot if you don't have the budget. Well, this movie had the budget and they still decided to hide the creature in shadows, but that's just because the shadows work so well with the freaking xenomorph. This The Nostromo is basically a floating haunted house movie. Like it's just, the alien could be anywhere. It just blends in with everything. And it is so just freaking creepy. And to this day still holds up like with everything it does. The computers are about the only thing that kind of truly dated. Yeah. (laughs) Everything else about this movie is just incredible. The world building. And like just just from the first movie, the world building is insane. Where you see the end, the dead corpse of the engineer on the old like giant rail gun on the planet, and like how terrifying is it to deal with a monster that is like so quick, nimble, and agile, and that also when you hurt it and wound it, it bleeds freaking acid. It's like there's no it's escape. Got, yeah, <laughs> literally. Like this thing is like got self defense mechanisms up the ass and. It is just one of the most creepiest films I'd ever watched when I was a kid and love the shit out of it to this day. Wasn't it like one of the most ripped off films after that as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you think uh, Galaxy of Terror. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, it's funny. I did. Um, uh, I think we did doubt Galaxy of Terror and Android Vision. And, and I really try to break down when I when I do that show. A, a, a lot of history of the movie backgrounds, different things, just fun facts about the movies, basically. And, and, and essentially, uh, this movie was actually supposed to be made by Roger Corman and uh, a bigger studio got its hands on it and outbid him. And that was his galaxy was terror was terror was his fuck you to aliens and, and Roger <laughs> That's Corman. Great. And what's really funny about galaxy of terror, you see a lot of those lithograph backgrounds. So what a lith- lithograph is, is a lot of people don't know is 
perfect example uh if you watch robocop right and you see the building that, that's in the beginning of robocop they actually built or uh, painted a picture uh that made the building look bigger and then the way they film it it's a forced perspective it really looks like the picture picture's that big um yeah. so that's kind of so not lithograph i'm probably fucking it up anyways james cameron was hired for De galaxy of terror to do those paintings and do the background and do all that stuff yeah. uh which is funny because he's brought back to do the sequel to, to alien you know it's like he's got it down but yeah so <laughs> so you see james cameron's fingerprints in galaxy of terror but god damn you can't i mean it was for, for rightfully it was given to the right hands right so yes Cor <laughs> he didn't corman it up <laughs> yeah exactly because yeah, like Alien is just so incredible, and there's a reason why it is such a popular franchise to this day. Absolutely, cool, awesome. So, Android, all right, with your number one. All right, so I'm going international, um, mm. and I'm going south of the border, and this is absolutely my number one '70s horror movie uh, for for right now until something comes up from the cracks and cat bites me in the ass. But this one movie is called Alucarda. Uh, Ooh, La, nice. La de las Tielembas. So it's uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Alucarda or know what it's about. Nope. I have heard I have heard and know what it's about because of podcasts. And there you what go. I wanted to see. So the movie is a Mexican production, but it was shot in English. So the women they did speak English in the movie, and, and it, it was released from in all kinds of different titles. I actually own two Alucarda shirts that I cannot wear to work. Um, so uh, essentially the movie is about, um, two girls, uh, that grow up together in a orphanage, uh, in a, con a convent. So they're, they're, they're going to be raised to be nuns basically, but they call themselves sisters, but there is some sexual tension between them too. So there, there's some stuff going on there, but, um, they meet a gypsy in the woods, a very creepy guy. And, you know, uh, kind of fast forward to one of the girls feels like Satan's calling her. She's feeling the call. She's, you know, so it's a very Catholic film, right? Um, in that sense of the word. And she's feeling the call of Satan and she can't resist it no more. And before you know it, the crazy, rainy, stormy, windy night, the, the, the gypsy uh that was in the woods is now in the room and he's like yes give your life to satan you know and the girl uh is giving her life to satan and she is spouting as loud as she can at the top of her lungs naked bending backwards holding a knife every fucking black metal band that i i don't like but like bills above you know just like all these these demonic names and um it's placed in a catholic church so uh, the girl starts to get possessed, but then her sister, who also gave her life to Satan, starts turning into a vampire. And then they bring a priest in. And the priest, which is brilliantly played by the guy who was uh, the gypsy. So double act, right? Double role. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but it's so blasphemous. Um, it's so much nudity. The girls do end up going to an orgy with other Satanists and the devil does appear. Uh, you know, he's got his, what the Catholic version, what they say Satan looked like, right? Like, you know, he's got the, the goat's head basically. Um, lots of nudity, lots of gore, lots of blasphemy. Um, I love this movie. Um, again, I'm not going to give too much away about it, but this fucking movie goes off the rails. Fucking nuns bursting in flames. There is um, self-flogging by Catholic nuns and priests because, hey, you know, that's what Catholics like to do. They like to uh, pay for their sins. So there's a lot of, so it kind of draws that line, like who's the more evil here? You know, is it the Catholics? Is it the you know the people following or the, these girls are they just following their instincts to want to be a part of something bigger than the catholic church so that makes them evil but are, are they lesbians um so full bush in this movie just to <laughs> let everybody know uh full 70s bush um i love this movie it's dirty it's grimy it's gritty it's blasphemous it's satanic and uh, when I did Alucarda a long time ago on Android Vision, and I had Sean do it with me, uh, he's a staunch Catholic, which is fine. I respect everybody. Um, he literally fucking felt like he committed a sin watching this movie. He's like, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> like, he's like, dude, I like, I, I got to go to church. And I was like, what? You know, so um, uh, a funny story. I did get a, a, a Alucarda 40th anniversary shirt. 
and it's got all these upside down crosses on the back right Jesus, and, and bleeding <laughs> and so Ray, it was one summer and rachel's like hey let's go get some baskin robbins which is you know ice cream place i don't know if you guys have that up there yeah. 31 flavors. oh yeah yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, so i'm like all right let's go and she's like can you run in for me i was like oh yeah i'll run in for you and like i run in and i'm wearing the shirt right and like there's families and everybody in there and and the oh, card the shirt the girl has her tits hanging out on the cover with the fucking <laughs> It's it's <laughs> such a fucking offensive shirt. And she's like, everybody was looking at you in there. I was like, I noticed that. Why the fuck were they? That was weird. Like, do I have something growing on my face? Like, what the fuck? You know? And she's like, let me look down at my shirt. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's just littered with, I'll probably pull it down here and show you guys in a minute. But because I, I recorded my closet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so Alucarda, I love it. It's fucking amazing. Check it out. It's blasphemous as fuck. It's dirty. It's grimy. <laughs> And it's about Satan. So there you sounds have like it. Sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're moving Android. Not going to lie. This definitely <laughs> sounds like an Android pick. So my number one, uh, probably not going to be a surprise to Scotty, is Alice, Sweet Alice. Oh, actually, uh, I had a different movie picked. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. well, you were wrong. So <laughs> this 1976 movie is a slasher. Uh, I guess, is it, is it a giallo? Would this be considered a giallo? Or no? I don't know what giallos oh, are. I think this is kind of like borderline giallo, borderline uh, slasher. Okay. Is this so the one with it, Brooke? Is this one with Brooke? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's about basically two young ladies, uh, a, the 12-year-old named Alice and her nine-year-old sister near, named Karen. And Karen is murdered. And Alice is seen as the prime suspect. So the movie explores whether Alice did indeed commit this murder or not. Uh, there's a creepy pedo neighbor that gets what's coming to him in this film, which is a great little scene. The acting in this film is phenomenal, especially from the kids. And I think the what most people know about is the rain jacket and the mask uh, mm. that comes out of this movie. And I wanted to see this movie for years. I had a really hard time just getting my hands on a good copy. And luckily, I have a good friend that we all have that has a flex. And I was able to watch <laughs> his copy and love it. Love it. I, I think this movie, especially when you have strong child actors and you have a child that is accused of a murder, I think that can be very powerful. We see children as very innocent. And I think the 70s was a time where they really started to explore that idea of children not being innocent and being capable of horrible, horrendous things. So if you haven't had a chance, this is a very popular film from the 70s, but I strongly recommend Alice, Sweet Alice. Hell and that's yes. it. That's it. So now we just do our honorable mentions. I'll go just because it's on me to just make it easier. Uh, so I only have four. Um, obviously, there's lots of movies that I really like, but I had to think about, you know, if I was flipping through the channels on a Saturday afternoon, what would I stop and stay on? Uh, the first one was Jaws. You know, I think we got to give credit oh, course, to Jaws yeah. and everything that it did. Uh, Grizzly. I really like Grizzly. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Grizz <laughs> Grizzly's fun. fun. It's, it's fun such a fun film, one. Right? It is. Um, I love The Omen. I love Perry Peck. Um, I think that probably has a lot to do with it. And I adore frogs. I think that ending nice. being of frogs is creepy as fuck. What uh, about uh? What about Sam Elliott's fucking giant trouser snake in that movie? <laughs> I like that too. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so you you had honorable mentions, but yet there's two movies that I I so expected to be somewhere on your list that were not. Oh yeah. Deep but, Red. Uh, yeah. No. And uh, and uh, Fangs. Oh, Fangs! Fangs is my love. I love Fangs. <laughs> Snakey Bender. Snakey Bender for life. <laughs> that movie is so insane. Right? Oh man, um, I love it. So yeah, I'll run through mine. I have uh five of them. Uh so I mean, what 70s films can you have, or what 70s list can you have without these two films, especially? 1974's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's fucking incredible. Uh 1977's Suspiria, beautiful. Yeah. Suspiria. Which <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then and then these three were ones that i kept rotating between if they were going to be on my top five for sure and that is Hausu from 1977 or also known as house a japanese ghost story that is fucking batshit insane bonkers it, it is the weirdest goddamn movie i've ever seen and i laugh hysterically every time i see it um theater of blood 1973 with vincent price a scorned actor killing off critics playing diff pretty much portraying different acting roles as he kills off these characters and you can tell vincent price is just having a fucking blast with this film and then 1974's sugar hill black exploitation revenge flick 
uh, absolutely freaking awesome creepy ass zombies in this because it's basically about this woman that uh these uh racist white people end up killing her husband and she goes and meets the voodoo priest the baron Semedi, who gives her the power to summon zombies to help exact her revenge and it is fucking an awesome movie yeah that's uh that's a good one. I think they're like kind of on that topic. Like there's a really good handful of black exploitation films from the seventies that really mm-hmm. delved. So you got Blackenstein. I don't know if you yes. know Blackenstein. And then you have uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. White, or is it Dr. Black, Dr. Black and Mr. White, which is basically, it's a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Mr. Hyde movie. Um, and then there's a really cool one. Uh, well, there's an exorcist one. Uh, it's called JD's revenge. Oh, nice. And, jd's revenge is it's 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 basically a possession movie but uh yeah so anyways i i, I watched all those last year at least black exploitation films those like these horror ones which is really cool because again we kind of talked about earlier about how like i liked how the the, the african-american culture of the 70s did want to do their take on yes. the horror genre as well you know which was really fucking cool um yeah. and there's like a quite quite a handful of those as shitty as a lot of them are um they still are pretty endearing especially oh they Dr. absolutely Black. are I remember first seeing Dr. Black and was it Dr. Black and Mr. White uh, on an Elvira episode when I was a little, little kid. I was like, what is nice? (laughs) I think it was Mr. White because he did kind of get pale when he was the mean guy, you know, (laughs) (laughs) real quick before I do my thing. um, Let's see. Okay. So this is the Alucard, the shirt. I'm going to hopefully do this justice. Wow. This is pretty intense. So as we can see, there's a lot of faces on this shirt and there's some boobies. Yes, very there clear. There's some boobies. Wow. The yeah. some blood. I can see <laughs> okay. why everyone in Baskin Robbins was staring at you. Well, this is the back. Here we oh go. my. Ooh. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> upside down crosses with a naked person upside down. Awesome. Man. Then, Only you. And then I, well, I have the long sleeve and the long sleeve actually has the girl bending backwards with the knife and like they have it angled to where you can kind of see her bush peeking out. Oh, geez. It's, oh, the seven, it's, the, it's the 70s bush. It's the 70s bush. Yeah. So let me go to my, my, uh, my picks and I, and I, I'm going to maybe have uh, just off the top of my head, right? Like I have Lucio Fulci zombie. Yes, it's yes, one absolutely. of my, one of my most favorite zombie movies, obviously Jaws. Uh, the Exorcist, The Shining, yep. um, and uh, what else was a, a, a one that really blew me away? Obviously, Phantasm holds yeah. a dear place in my heart. Um, and those were a lot of the movies that were on my, my list. But a kind of probably a couple of couple ones that uh, I, I I was really batting around with on this one that I for the list I wanted to give you guys was 1977's The Incredible Melting Man. Ooh, Ooh, we just actually recently just heard about, about that. that movie, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I have uh, 1975's Bug, uh, and nice. the 70s does do love their bug movies. Bug is like kind of a, a weird, uh, kind of mad scientist. Um, these these bugs are released. Uh, these dormant cockroaches are released out of uh, a fault line, and uh, they like to um, they feed off of like fire or something. I forget. It's weird. But anyways, the mad scientist cross pollinates them with regular cockroaches and they end up eating him. And uh, it, it, it's not for the, the squirmy type. So I actually have a famous monsters in film land. Cause I collect those old magazines uh, right here to the right of me. It's hung up. I'm not going to get it down, but of uh, the incredible melting man. That's really cool. Android. That's really so, cool. Fuck it. I'm getting it down. Oh, Android doesn't <laughs> care. He's decided he's like, no one puts Android in a corner. Look no how fucking keeps... cool that is. Look at the melting. Oh, oh wow. my God. That's gross. Ew. Yeah. So anyways. <laughs> yeah. I wonder where Hellraiser got their inspiration from. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? They they took, right? dr- have you seen <laughs> Robocop, Heather? Yes. Uh, long, yeah. A long time ago. I don't remember much of it though. I'll be honest. So the, the, the melting guy from Robocop takes inspiration from this. So. Oh, definitely. Um, it's a fun creature feature. Yeah. It looks pretty badass. Well, We've come to the end of our show. So before we plug a little bit of more of Android, please, if you're not already a member yet and you're listening to this free on our feed, you could have heard it two weeks earlier if you're a Patreon. Yes, that's right, Android. And for only $3 a month, people get access to all the other cool Legion stuff that we do. So Scott and I do a top five show with a famous podcaster every month and they always bring the knowledge we pick topics for people that we know that are knowledgeable in so they share a lot of information 
again. So you got a lot out of this episode. So if you want more like this, please join us on Patreon um, and also listen to our other Legion friends. So before we go, Android, would you like to pump or pump, pimp, pump it up? Pump, pump it up, you know, whatever. P word your shows or P word. Um, we're gonna provide yeah. links. Don't worry. <laughs> but like, was there anything yeah. you want to say or um come follow me Android Virus on Twitter. Um, that's where you see. I kind of promote all my shit, uh, all the podcasts I do, Android Vision, um, and I know Twitter is a cesspool, but uh, you can't fuck with algorithms, gang. You Mm -hmm. don't have to see all the bullshit. Just like things that you like. Stay out of the politics, and you won't get all the bullshit on Twitter like that That people complain about. Yeah, you can. I like horror. I like pro wrestling, and I like podcasts, and I like nerdy shit, and that's all the stuff that I like, and that's all the shit that my Twitter feed gives me. So um so you can come come like that um come like me android virus on instagram uh that one comes with a uh a warning um <laughs> and uh just come like my facebook page android vision um that's where everything's at and uh again uh we do the cemetery gates podcast with me and xander kane uh we do it's not horror with you guys and then i do a, another couple of I don't know, not so serious podcast. We kind of do it whenever we're kind of feeling froggy. We have, uh, is it really that bad? <laughs> and uh, I have the wrestling show with uh, Mr. Wildman Willis Wheeler and Nudie, where we just uh, talk all nerdy things about wrestling and the state of pro wrestling. And we only do that show maybe every other month, you know, but, it, you know, I just upload that to my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Come like my YouTube channel, Android Virus, and Android Vision. I have two of them, so come like those. Like everything that is Android, you will not be disappointed. Let yes. me assure you. <laughs> that is 100% correct. <laughs> that you will I, not be disappointed. I have been such a good boy this last year on my social media, by the way. You yes, have. you have been. But you know, Android, we love you and accept you for who you are. And I we know. never want you to change. I just, I'm, I'm done with these 30 day bans. Like, yeah, but you do get banned a lot. <laughs> this is true. I've, I've been pretty good. Been pretty good. So uh, I, I get tempted, but uh, I guess that's what messengers for, right? Exactly. What, and you never, <laughs> and you never cease to disappoint via messenger. No. <laughs> uh, but that's reserved for close friends only. So yes. that's VIP in order to get onto, you know, Android DMs. You got, <laughs> you got to be pretty tight with them in order to do that. We'll keep so, the circle tight. That's right. Like the inner circle. This is like yes, there you go. Yes. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> so thank you, Android, so much for thank you. Us. It like awesome. yeah, this you guys this was amazing, dude. Bottom of my heart, it was a pleasure, it was an honor and it really feels good to know that you people think of me as highly as you do. And oh, we really I do. Mwah, really appreciate yeah. it. Seriously, Dude, it makes me feel good. We you. freaking love you. And we are so happy to finally have you on the show. <laughs> yeah. And then we're coming for our last guest on It's Not Horror. We have something special planned for Mr. Venom coming yes. in the year. So, um, mm. Scotty, why don't you see us out? All right, everyone. So thank you very much for listening to our top five lists of the 70s horror films on our legion patreon feed and our regular feed um we will be back next week with our uh very like our main feed topic which will be uh something special to say the least um so until next time everyone unpleasant dreams bye bye guys